In the name of our crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to welcome all of you to Lewinsville Presbyterian's online worshiping community for this Labor Day weekend, Sunday, September the 6th, 2020. We are so glad to have you joining us. Whether you are watching this service on our website at lewinsville.org, seeing it on YouTube, or listening to the audio version of this service on your phone. However you're joining us, we are very glad that you're here. We're especially glad to have those of you who are joining us for the first time for today's service. We are particularly honored to have you with us in our online worshiping community. During the weeks of the month of September, our sermon series is going to be organized around the great text from Micah chapter 6, verse 8, where people of faith are told to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. This threefold summons to us is deeply needed at this time in our society and in our world. A bulletin for this worship service is available for you to download through our website at lewinsville.org if you'd like to download that and follow along. Today's worship service will include the celebration of communion, so at this time, if you haven't already, you're invited to push pause and to gather together the different elements of communion, bread and wine, juice and crackers, so that you have those nearby when that time in the service comes. Friends, wherever you have come from and wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome with us at Lewinsville Presbyterian Church. Let us now worship the holy and the living God.
And now let us come together for a time of prayer and let us pray. God of mystery and might, whose wonderful works are to be remembered, whose goodness is to be proclaimed, move in our lives, renew our minds, soften our hearts and direct our feet that we may follow you more faithfully. May we know your love in the innermost place of our being. May we see it in the peace of our thoughts in the compassion we feel for others and in the acts of service you guide us toward. May we know your love, even as we confess all the ways that we have turned from it, diminished its power and even betrayed it. We have not held fast to what is good. We have let judgments and our own sense of righteousness cloud our relationships. We have not been patient in suffering nor persevered in prayer. We have repaid evil for evil and have failed to live in God's peace. Forgive us, Lord. Turn us back. Restore us and grow our discipleship as we follow Jesus Christ, whose life is both our model and our salvation. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. At this time, I want to invite the children to come up close, to come up by the TV or the computer screen for the time with children and the children's message. Today is a communion Sunday uh, here at Lewinsville, and so in just a few moments, you and your family uh, will be able to celebrate the communion meal. We celebrate communion on the first Sunday of every month. And communion is one of the most beautiful and most powerful experiences that we engage in um, as a church. Part of the reason that communion is such a powerful experience is because at the communion table, anyone who wants to follow Jesus is welcome and everyone has an equal place at the table. Rich people and poor people have the same place at the communion table. Old people and young people, powerful business people and small children, black people, white people, brown people, happy people, sad people, angry people, all people are welcome to the table, invited to the table, and have an equal place at the table. 
There are no box seats at the communion table where you can get special treatment. Everyone has an equal place at the table. You belong here. Your parents and your family belong here. Your friends and your neighbors, they belong at the table. People on the other side of the world, in other countries, they belong at the communion table of Jesus Christ as well. All people are welcome. Now, the communion table is a fairly simple table. It may look even kind of small, but in our imaginations and with the eyes of faith, what we can see is that this table has a heart, and the heart of the communion table is large enough to hold the entire world. Communion is one of the most powerful and most beautiful things that we get to do as a church. Friends, let's say a prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for your invitation to us to follow you and to come to your communion table. We thank you for the love of Jesus, which is poured out at this table. We thank you for the invitation to us to our neighbors and to the whole world. We thank you so much that your heart is so big for the whole world. All of these things we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Hi, Lewinsville Church family. We're the Kohler family. I'm Alan. I'm Leslie. I'm Brett. I'm Alan. I'm Kristen. We miss seeing everybody at church. This week, we, we are particularly thinking of all students and teachers who are at the start of their school year, trying to stay healthy and connected. We hope everyone feels the peace of Jesus Christ in their lives. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Loving God, we thank you for the Holy Scriptures and the truth within its pages. Thank you for the opportunity to spend time in your word. Keep away all that would distract us today. Give us a teachable spirit and ears that listen to your still small voice. Give us insight and understanding as we read and reflect on your word and help us mature in faith and grow in grace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture this morning is from the New Testament, the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. 
The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Our second reading is from the New Testament, the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Take the words of our mouths. Take the thoughts and the meditations of our hearts. Take the actions of our hands and our feet, O God, and make them all yours. Change us, form us, use us as your disciples. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with God. As we are making our way through these challenging days, these days of the pandemic, these days of hostility and violence, these days when many of us are becoming newly aware of the long and ongoing realities of racial injustice in our society, days when we are surrounded by seemingly endless polarization. As we are making our way, we are given today these two texts, which Linda just read for us. A text from Exodus chapter 12 about the great freedom meal of Passover, and a gospel text from Matthew about conflict resolution. The lectionary has an uncanny way of bringing to us words that we need to hear. It may not happen all the time, but it happens with the lectionary more times than one might expect. In our moment, we may hear these texts from Exodus and from Matthew teaching us that the great kingdom work of building the beloved community is the work of liberating all who are oppressed and the work of engaging in persistent, nonviolent, loving confrontation. Liberation of all who are oppressed and nonviolent, loving confrontation. The Passover meal, described in detail in Exodus chapter 12, is the meal of freedom for those who were slaves and now are free, those who were oppressed by an empire and who have been liberated. The meal is described in chapter 12, the liberation is accomplished in chapter 14, and then is to be celebrated for all time. The exodus from slavery is central to the identity of Israel and of Israel's God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. 
That's how the giver of the Ten Commandments self-identifies. The Lord heard the cries of the Hebrew slaves because that is what God does. The text teaches us that God is attentive to the cries of oppressed people wherever they occur. And God acts in history to liberate them from their bondage. It is from this paradigmatic story of liberation that we get the energy and the power of liberation theology articulated for a variety of contexts and summed up by Gustavo Gutierrez, one of the founders of Latin American liberation theology, who said that all you really need to know about Christianity is that it stands always on the side of life over against death. The Passover meal of freedom and liberation is, of course, the meal that Jesus ate with his followers that became our celebration of the Lord's Supper. So every time that we gather at the communion table, we consciously place ourselves in this great stream of freedom, locating ourselves with the Hebrew slaves and with slaves in every society throughout history, including slaves held in our own land. We take our place with them in the knowledge that God hears the cries of oppressed people and is at work for their liberation and their flourishing. The beloved community is a community of justice, a community where the marginalized and the oppressed know that they belong at the table, and a community where those in the dominant culture, which means those of us who are white, are learning to live lives of glad solidarity rather than anxious accumulation, lives of generosity rather than defensiveness and fear. Building the beloved community is the work of liberating those who are oppressed. And that is not all. We are also given the text from Matthew 18 about conflict resolution. For the Bible knows that in the work of building the beloved community, sins will be committed, resistance and hostility are going to be encountered. If another member of the church sins against you, the text begins. When your fellow congregant, your, when your neighbor sins against you, offends you, trespasses against you, hurts you, you do not have license to post about them on social media. You are not free to tweet about them. You are not to go and gossip with your friends about what a horrible person they are. No, when your fellow congregant sins against you, the text says, you are to go to them face to face and talk about it when the two of you are alone. If that does not work, you are still not free to post about it on social media or gossip about it with your friends. You are to bring along someone else, maybe someone who is a bit more objective about the situation and who may be able to help you all work it out. And if that doesn't work, you're still not free to declare the person a horrible human being, for it is a breakdown in the fabric of the church which means that it is a concern for the whole body. And if that fails to restore the relationship, then the person shall be as a Gentile or a tax collector to you. Now, we might think that that means that you finally get to treat them as a monster, but then we remember that disciples of Jesus are sent 
to bring the gospel to the Gentiles and to sit at table with tax collectors. So even then, your relationship with them is to continue. In our society of alienation and violence and hostility, it can be hard to imagine Matthew 18 being put into practice with anything like spiritual grace and maturity, not as a self-righteous way to shame or attack those who we think are in the wrong, but having the depth of love and groundedness in our own relationships with Christ to go face to face with love for those who in our eyes have acted wrongly. Now, we may notice that the text in Matthew 18 speaks of situations involving another member of the church. So we may think that that lets us off the hook of needing to engage this way with those outside the church. But then we remember that any time that the disciples tried to draw lines to circumscribe the ones they were supposed to love, Jesus had a way of moving right beyond those lines. Matthew 18 teaches us to build the beloved community with loving, persistent, nonviolent confrontation with those from whom we are divided. The beloved community cannot be built with violence. As we see what is unfolding in Kenosha, in Portland, in Rochester, in the streets of cities and small towns, wherever we encounter the spirit of violence, whether it is in the lives of others or in our own hearts, whether it is from those on the political right or those on the political left, wherever we find ourselves permissive towards violence, as long as it is being done by those we agree with, whenever we encounter the spirit of violence, we need to recognize that we are in the presence of an idolatrous spirit that is impatient and fearful and unwilling to stay with the power of courageous love. The beloved community cannot be built upon fear and hatred and violence, but only with courageous, conscious love. Peter Marty the publisher of the Christian Century and the son of the renowned church historian Martin Marty has written recently about the work of dismantling structural racism, addressing those of us who can get defensive about this stuff. And Peter Marty says to his white friends and colleagues, look, he says, you have some tools in the toolbox of your faith life that are exciting to put to work in our world of racial inequity. Start by letting go of the defensiveness. That's a must. It's a constrictive survival response that only separates you from God. I know we equate letting go of something, including cherished assumptions, with deprivation. But claw marks do not set you free. According to Jesus, relinquishment is a ticket to abundant life. Relinquishment is a ticket to abundant life. Re-examining personal behaviors and perspectives is not just a Lenten project. We no longer have the luxury 
of living racially unaware lives, he says. Where you feel uncomfortable, disempower it. Let go of your brittleness. The Lord helps us to know that we don't have to secure ourselves against insecurity. Relax into the power of faith. Do some soul searching and live with the mind of Christ, humbly open to changing all that needs to be changed about you and your world. Friends of Jesus Christ, we are on our way to the beloved community. We are always on our way to the beloved community, the community where the oppressed are set free, where the dominant ones relinquish control, and where sins are confronted, named, dealt with, and forgiven, where all people will do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with God. To God and to God alone be all of the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We offer ourselves to you, O God, with gratitude, humility, supplication, and hope. We want to be useful to you, O God. We want to serve you, and we look forward to seeing how your Spirit will be at work in our lives and in our world. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And now let us affirm what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed, words that connect us with each other and words that connect us with Christians across the ages and the world. And let us proclaim together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, we want to welcome all of you who are joining us for worship on this Labor Day weekend for Sunday, September the 6th, 2020. We are especially glad to have those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time today. We are so honored to have you joining us um, at this time. There are a number of announcements about the mission and ministry of this congregation that I want to share with you uh, at this time. Our next outdoor sunset service is going to take place on Wednesday, September the 16th at 7 o'clock p.m. The theme for that service is going to be drawn from Exodus chapter 14 and we'll be exploring God's presence with us on our journeys. As with previous services, we need you to RSVP for the service through the website. Uh, we're planning the service for 50 people. Masks will be required for the service, gloves are welcome, and physical distancing will be maintained um, during the service. Tonight, September the 6th, Sunday, September the 6th at 7 o'clock p.m., we will be having our monthly Teze worship service. These are ordinarily held on the first Sunday of the month. Teze is a style of worship that is meditative and contemplative. It's a service of prayer, song, and silence. Tonight's Teze service is going to be held over Zoom, and you can register for the Teze service and find out more information about it on our website. I want to share some information about a back-to-school mission opportunity um, that we have uh, through Westgate Elementary School. For a number of years, Lewinsville has been partnering with Westgate to support their back-to-school backpack program 
as well as helping with food assistance for students and families in need. Thanks to Lewinsville's partnership with Westgate, it is now a site for Fairfax County's breakfast and lunch meal program. 120 students continue to receive this support during the school year. Many of you have asked how you can help support those students um, during this time of uncertainty and distance learning on the call to action page of our website at lewinsville.org. You will find there um, a list of four very needed items, grocery gift cards, spiral notebooks, 64 crayon packs, and watercolor paint kits. If you have any questions about this, you can reach out to Karen Seipel or Carol Kaffenberger. The website has links for you to support the, a variety of programs at Westgate, or you can purchase those items and bring them to the church on Sunday, September the 13th for our Festival Sunday drive through Which brings me to our Festival Sunday drive through on Sunday, September the 13th. Um, that would ordinarily be our traditional kickoff day for our programs here at Lewinsville. Festival Sunday, we would often have an ice cream celebration. But this year, uh, because of the changed circumstances around us, we are having an adapted Festival Sunday. We are going to have a drive through Festival Sunday next Sunday, September the 13th, from 12 o'clock noon to 1.30 p.m. So... You can watch the worship service at 11 a.m. and then hop in your car and come to the church parking lot for the drive through Festival Sunday celebration. Church staff will be there at stations to greet you. Members of our Congregational Care and Membership Ministry Group will be handing out toppings for you to make an ice cream sundae at home that evening. There'll be information for you to pick up about the Christian education ministry here, the music ministry, children's and youth ministries, and there will be the opportunity for you to drop off those items for the Westgate Elementary School. When you come to the church parking lot, you can just follow the directions there uh, for the route of the drive through Again, that's next Sunday, September the 13th, from 12 noon until 1.30 p.m. This coming Saturday, February the, not February the 12th, September the 12th, from 9 a.m. until 11 o'clock a.m., we're going to be having the next uh, Faith and Public Policy Gathering um, is going to be held on Zoom. The topic for this Saturday's gathering, Saturday, September the 12th, um, the topic for this Saturday's gathering is the Virginia Redistricting Amendment, which is an item that will be on the November ballot. There will be speakers from varying perspectives at this gathering, as well as a time for questions. More information about this will be in this week's Thursday update, and you can register for that event on our homepage at lewinsville.org. Friends, we continue to be so profoundly grateful to you for your ongoing, continuing financial support of the mission and ministry here at Lewinsville. Your generosity is supporting the ministries of the church now and into the future. The simplest way for you to give to our regular offering as well as to our other offerings is through the website at lewinsville.org by clicking on the Give Online button there. You can also give by text message or you can mail in your offering check and that will be processed as soon as possible. Because today is the first Sunday of the month, we are also receiving the Deacon's Fund collection today. Your support of our Deacon's Fund has been so very generous um, in these last months. The Deacon's Fund is used to provide limited emergency relief to people in situations where they are undergoing financial distress. You can give to the Deacon's Fund through our online giving page. Also, a number of you have asked about ways that you can support those whose lives were disrupted and devastated by the recent Hurricane Laura along the Gulf Coast. As with other disasters, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, an offering which is supported by the One Great Hour of Sharing offering, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is already working with mission partners in the presbyteries that were affected by the hurricane, 
as well as with our mission partners in Haiti and the Dominican Republic. There is a link in the online giving page of our website to give to Presbyterian Disaster Assistance for Hurricane Laura. As always, friends, please stay in touch with us, with Pastor Jen, with myself, with the church office, about any prayer requests or needs that you have or that you are aware of. The flowers in our sanctuary this morning are given to the glory of God by Clay and Kay Ansel in memory of their parents, Henry and Virginia Lee Margrath and Ralph and Mary Ansel. We join with Clay and with Kay in giving thanks for them, for the impact they had on Clay and Kay, for the impact they had on the rest of their family and community and on our world. Friends, let us now continue our worship of Almighty God during this time of offering.
as we come to the prayers of the people today, some from the country and also the congregation to share with you in a time where we have been lamenting racial disparity in the out of proportion deaths of African Americans from COVID-19 and the expanding list of names of unarmed black men and women killed or injured by police. Today, we also remember before God the lives of Chadwick Boseman and John Thompson, two African American men whose success in their field as actor and basketball coach was matched by their engagement in their communities and their work on behalf of the African American community. We also join the Scopolitas family in our prayers after the death of Jim's brother-in-law, Richard, this past week. And we have a joy to share with you all that Pastor Anna Marie and Mitch are expecting a baby girl in January. She's about 21 weeks pregnant now, and we rejoice with Anna Marie and Mitch in this news. And now let us draw our hearts together for a time of prayer and let us pray. All-knowing God, you know our needs before we name them in prayer. All caring God, you care enough to hear our prayers, knowing that all we truly need is your love. And all loving God, hear now these prayers that we lift before you. We pray today for those who struggle medically, those in the beginning, middle, or end of treatment plans, those in our communities, country, and world diagnosed with COVID, those with chronic pain and illness, those who are ignoring something that needs attention, those who are navigating changes in activity, mobility, and cognition. We pray today for all the caregivers of parents and children, and especially those in that sandwich generation who are doing both, those caring for people with dementia and other forms of cognitive decline, those with mental illness, for those whose days involve visiting nursing facilities and assisted living centers, for those making decisions about the care of a loved one. We pray today for those without what they need, without enough money for bills, without homes and property after Hurricane Laura or the fires in California, without a backup net if rental assistance doesn't arrive, without enough employment as we pray on this Labor Day weekend, without reserves of friendship or hope. We pray today for all those who grieve, those whose grief is recent, those who grieve anniversaries of loss in years or maybe even decades, those whose minds are clouded by the fog of grief, those whose lives have never felt quite the same, yet find courage and hope. We pray today for those whose path in this country is hard because of racial injustice, who live in communities complicated by environmental hazards from decisions made decades ago, those without access to adequate health care, those who face the slow, demeaning effects of overt and subtle prejudice. We pray today for those who lead in govern and those in law enforcement, that their actions and words would unite and build bridges, that they would be models of creativity and calm in furthering peace. We pray today for those for whom faith is difficult, those whose depression clouds it, whose addictions numb it, whose loneliness questions it, and whose disappointments challenge it. And Lord, we pray today for ourselves and wherever we found ourselves in these words, even as we pray more broadly outside of ourselves for our church, our community, and our world. In the name of Jesus, the Lord of one and the Lord of all, we pray the prayer he taught his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends of Jesus Christ, we come now to the communion meal. The meal of communion is a meal of justice. It is a meal occasioned by the execution of our Lord Jesus Christ, his body broken and his blood poured out. Communion meal is a meal of intimacy, intimacy with each other, intimacy with the church in every land, a 
across every political boundary, across every division of race and language, across every human construct and human barrier, one church all around the world, Jesus insists to us that we are in fact united as a church and no amount of human alienation or division can change that. This meal of communion is a meal of forgiveness. It is a meal where we experience and receive forgiveness for the trespasses and violations that we have committed and where we are sent to offer forgiveness to our world, our world of animosity, sent to be agents of truth and reconciliation, sent to bring in those who have been cast out, sent to stand with those who are regularly pushed to the side and scorned. This meal, this communion meal, is a meal of justice intimacy and forgiveness, which is, of course, to say that this communion meal is a meal of courageous love. This meal belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ, and Christ invites all who want to follow Him to share in this meal in the knowledge that this meal has been prepared especially for you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, strong and faithful God, in the beginning, your word summoned light, night withdrew, and creation dawned. You created human beings in your image to be the stewards of all creation. You gave us breath and speech that all living creatures might find a voice to sing your praise and to celebrate the creation that you call good. When sin had scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew your entire creation. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From your people Israel, you raised up Jesus, your Son, the living bread, in whom our deepest hungers are satisfied. Jesus healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. And with a love stronger than death, Jesus opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirit. Let now, O God, your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these your gifts of bread and cup, both here and at home and in apartments and wherever they are found, that they may be for us the communion of the body and the blood of Christ, and that we may become one in Him. With your church around the entire world, we look forward to Christ coming again, when at last all peoples will be free, all divisions will be healed, and with your creation we will sing your praise. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The Scriptures teach us that on the night of His arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks for it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, even as I, ministering in his name, break it and give it to you. And he said, this is my body. It's broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took a cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is poured out. Poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of the world. All of you, drink of it. For as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we do proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again, and come again he will. Friends, you are now invited to eat and drink and receive the gifts of God that are given for you and that are before you at this time. Let us now receive communion.
that your table confirm our intention. Give it your seal of forgiveness and grace. Teach us to serve without pride or pretension. Lord, in your kingdom, whatever our place. When at your table each time of returning, vows are renewed and our courage restored, Let us pray. Living and holy God, we give you thanks and praise for this meal, for what it signifies to us, what it means to us. By this meal, O God, you come to us in your mystery, in your grace, and in your power. You abide with us in the midst of our lives, and you offer us everything that we need, everything that we need in order to be faithful to you at this time and in this place. We raise to you our prayers for our world and for all who are suffering on this day, that they too would know your presence, would sense your comfort, and would hear your calling in their lives. Go with us now into the days of this week, filled with your life and with your presence. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
evermore passes human knowing. Friends of Christ, we are on our way to the beloved community, that promised land of justice, kindness, and humility. In the days of this coming week, keep the eyes and ears of your heart open and attentive to the ways that God is calling you to set oppressed people free and to engage our broken and hurting world with persistent, nonviolent, courageous love. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God Almighty, and the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit be upon you, around you, and within you in the days of this week, throughout the rest of your life, and out into all eternity. Amen.